Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to show you how you can create a group naming policy in Microsoft 365. So first of all, let me show you what I'm talking about uh, and I'll then explain how to create uh, a policy and then I'll um, you know, essentially go over a few use cases on why this might be a good idea. So look, I'm on the SharePoint start page and I logged in as, you know, Greg under my user ID. And, you know, typically if you create, let's say, a team site, all right, and uh, I'm creating a regular team site. And of course, uh, when you create a team site, it behind the scenes, it creates a Microsoft 365 group uh, along with a few other assets like, you know, planner and group calendar in Outlook. So, but let me show you um, you know, so I'm creating a site just like that. By default, of course, uh, it creates, um, you know, a group email address. Uh, it creates uh, a URL uh, with whatever name I specified. And of course, you can tweak it. But by default, there is no naming convention. Essentially, people can call it whatever they you know, want to call it, uh, and it could be literally all over the place, you know, any name uh, would be fine. However, and this especially is great if you are part of a large organization, specifically if you even have offices in multiple, you know, cities, you know, countries, regions, and so on, you can create a group naming policy that will identify a particular site belonging to, let's say, a particular department or region. So let me show you that experience and then I'll go over the steps on how to create it. So. Let me quickly navigate to another uh, browser. So in this one, I'm logged in as another user, uh, Mary. Uh, Mary happens to be residing in US and she is part of uh, human resources department. And so when Mary tries to create a site by clicking here, create a site, team site, and you know we'll select whatever template we have available. And Mary is trying to create a site. Look what happens. So I give it a name. You know, it's not just going to create um, a, a regular group with this name. It's actually, if you can see, it creates a prefix, you know, essentially uh, the country of uh, guest residence or uh, right for that user. And then uh, the suffix is the department. All right. So it takes the name, but then adds all of this additional information, you know, just like that. So let me click next. Let's finish, you know, site creation. So here's the site that got created. Uh, and look at this. The site name automatically became the one that, you know, Mary created, but then it added the prefix and suffix. And let me go, you know, to the admin center. I uh, actually found this site, you know, uh, being created in the admin center. Look at this, the prefix and suffix. And if I click on it, exactly you know what ha what happened is exactly what i described uh, right the you know prefix and suffix are part of the microsoft uh, 365 group they're part of the email uh, distribution list so um, let me now show you how uh, to create a, such a policy you do need to be the uh, admin of course to do so and you do need to have uh, access to uh, microsoft entra id and let me navigate there. So I'm going to admin center. And of course I choose uh, Entra ID. And uh, once I'm there, it's actually literally just uh, a few steps. Uh, so if you go under groups and group settings, um, if you click on naming policy. So there are a couple of options for us here. All right, um, there are a couple of options. So the first one, you can actually block certain words, all right? It could be, um, you know, essentially a list of words you do not want your users maybe to type in uh, into the name uh, of the site, into the name of the group. And I think you all know what uh, this words could be. Um, and the way it works, you pretty much have to upload a CSV file uh, with a list of such uh, words, and uh, they will essentially be prohibited. Uh, as, as soon as the user types them in, it will uh, pretty much uh, restrict the user from proceeding and um, will ask user to type in something else. So you can do that, but if you click on group naming policy uh, in a tab, uh, this is where you specify prefix and suffix. So by default, 
they obviously blank. Now, I already created the policy. You actually saw that already, uh, you know, being created, right? Um, you know, under this naming convention. So it takes the user's, you know, group name, whatever user types in and adds country of region. And in my case, department. Now, this data is extracted from the active directory, right, from the profile of the user. So once IT, for example, sets up a new user uh, in enter ID, they, you know, specify the region, the department they're part of, that's where this data is coming from. And in my case, so first of all, let me show you in my case, I, uh, again, I specify the region, that's an attribute uh, and department, you know, kind of that's a suffix. Now you could also add a string. It could be literally just whatever, maybe you want to type in, you know, some words in here, you can do that. But if you also add, let's say I want to add another attribute, I want to show you the list of available attributes. Again, all of those are coming from um, the, you know, from uh, enter ID, from Active Directory, from the user. Uh, you know, profile. So it's very, very easy to set this up. And, uh, you know, from that point, you know, forward, uh, essentially, uh, you will end up with a common, you know, kind of na naming convention for various sites created. So you might be wondering, you know, why do we need this? Why, you know, do we need this naming convention? Why not allow users to, to create whatever they want to create? So there are a couple of use cases on why, you know, this information might be important. So first of all, if you know you are part of large organization, you have lots and lots of you know sites, and um, you know you see all these different sites. And if you have a common you know naming convention, you can easily you know filter and you know and organize them by certain you know uh, keywords by certain uh, uh, you know uh, words within uh, this particular name. Another reason, another reason why this might be uh, super important uh, is, you know, the, the fact that uh, UIT can also apply retention policies uh, to the different sites and uh, different, for, for example, for legal uh, reasons, compliance reasons. Uh, and uh, when you have sites, um, you know, created in different regions, you know, different regions might have different, obviously, laws, right, in terms of data retention. And when you have certain naming policy, uh, you know, uh, for, for your site, uh, it becomes much easier for IT to identify, you know, uh, certain sites. For example, you can say all the sites that are part of European Union with maybe EU, you know, prefix, they should be kept for seven years uh, or something like this. And then, you know, um, sites belonging to another region uh, maybe will, uh, you know, end up uh, having a different retention policy. So definitely, definitely lots of, you know, use cases um, for, um, you know, for creating group naming policies, you know, for your sites. But in my opinion, it's a, it's a great, you know, and very uh, inexpensive, if you will, technique to, uh, you know, bring some order into your SharePoint uh, uh, and Microsoft 365 environment. So that's all really I wanted to share in this particular uh, video. Hopefully you learned uh, something new. Uh, and in the description of this, um, you know, video, I will also include the link uh, to an article where I provide a bit more information and screenshots. So feel free to check it out. Uh, but uh, for now, thank you very much uh, uh, for watching and hope to see you on my uh, YouTube channel soon. Bye-bye.